Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the next concept, which is the packetization in the packet switching, or you can say the packetization in the network layer. Now, as I told you, uh, in terms of switching, there were two types of switching, majorly, which is the packet switching, and second one is the circuit switching. The second one is the circuit switching. Now, in case of circuit switching, the all the data packets has to follow the same path because we not be having any other path between the sender and the receiver. But in case of packet switching, every data packet can take a different paths. What does that mean? Assuming that this is a sender and this is the net receiver, between sender and the receiver, there may be multiple paths that are present, like this. There may be any number of paths between the sender and the receiver, like this. Okay. Now, if the sender is sending some data packet to the receiver, now that data packet can take any path. It can go through this path. It can also take this path or any path it can take. Now this path can be decided according to the algorithm that we are going to use or you can say it can be the routing algorithm which decides this path. Now this routing algorithm there are a lot of, lot of research has done on this routing algorithm. Now most of the time research may be based on efficiency of the network, it may be based on reliability of the network and so on. So the packet can take any path. Now. If you are sending multiple packets and any one of these packets can take any path, now it is important for these packets, it is important for these packet, for these packets to know the destination address, to know the destination address as well as the sender address because if in any case the packet is not delivered to the receiver then at least the packet should you know uh, notify the sender that I'm not delivered in any way or what may be the reason I'm not delivered so the packet should contain the destination address as well as the sender address therefore every packet here will be having two parts if I just zoom in this packet now this entire packet it may be having two parts number one is the data that we want to send plus some header now this header contains the address and other information address for example what is the destination address as well as what is the receiver address as well as what is the receiver address okay so the packet is having data and the header which header is having the destination address receiver address and data is the data that you want to send now this thing is called as packet switching that we are the packets can take any path through the network now this packet switching uh, there's something called as packetization in the packet switching what is this packetization it says that if we have a packet which can be a bigger packet assume it is a packet of one megabyte that means you want to send one megabyte of information then you can divide this packet into smaller units let us say it is 2 kb every uh, smaller unit is of 2 kb and so on like this you can divide now if you are dividing this bigger packet in a smaller packet then what will be the benefit of that what is the benefit is will there be any benefit of this or not and in what cases can you say that there will be a benefit in what cases can you say there will not be any kind of benefit now imagine the scenario like this that we have a sender and we have a receiver okay and we want to send a data packet assume that the data packet or the data that you want to send is of thousand bits I'm just taking these numbers for simplicity uh, I could have taken I mean bytes I could have taken anything but I'm just taking these numbers for simplicity so that the calculations become very very easy and assuming that the bandwidth of the network is 
one kbps that is one kilobit kilo bits per second and uh, let us say the header that we are using is of uh, 100 bits what does it mean it means that every data packet that will be sending it is having two parts number one is the data part and second one is the header part and we know that the data is of 1000 bits and therefore the header here given is 100 bits so if the data is of 1000 bit and header is 100 bits therefore the size of the entire data packet will be 100 1100 bits like this now between the sender and the receiver we may be having any number of routers in, in the middle now the sender want to transmit this data packet to the receiver which is having data plus header okay so first the first of all the sender has to transmit this data packet to the transmission media then it will propagate here so it, let us say the propagation time is tp1 between the sender and this router 1 assuming this is the router 1 this is the router 2 and this is the receiver and then in the router the packet will be stored again it will be transmitted so this is the transmission time t1 this is the transmission time t2 and again from here to here we have the propagation time as p2 and then again on this router the same packet data packet will be transmitted assuming the transmission time this is t3 and from here to here the propagation time is tp3 now for simplicity purposes i'm assuming that the bandwidth of the entire network remains constant for simplicity assumptions that I'm using the bandwidth of entire network is constant so what happens if the bandwidth of the entire network is constant then this transmission time t1 will be equal to the transmission time t2 will be equal to the transmission time t3 all these transmission times will be the same and what will be this transmission time as you know transmission time is the size of the data packet size of the data packet divided by the bandwidth of the network and for this particular case the size of the data packet is 1000 plus 100 bits divided by the bandwidth of the network which is 1 kilobits per second 1 kilobits per second so it will be 1100 divided by 10 raised to power 3 bits per second so that is going to give us uh, 1.1 second okay so the transmission time in every t1 t2 t3 will be 1.1 seconds therefore the total time for transmitting this data packet the total time for transmitting this data packet will be transmission time t1 plus propagation time p1 plus transmission time t2 plus propagation time p2 plus transmission time t3 plus propagation time p3 so i'm removing all the unnecessary informations like what is the queuing time and all this other information just because for us the transmission time and propagation time only these two things are important for this particular case so the transmission time t1 is going to be 1.1 second plus let us say the propagation time is same tp1 transmission time it is t2 is also 1.1 second plus propagation time p2 plus transmission time t3 is also 1.1 second plus propagation time p3 so it is going to be 3.3 seconds plus tp1 plus tp2 plus tp3 okay so this is the total time that is going to require to transmit this particular data packet now this happened in the case when we have not you know uh, we have not done any kind of packetization in this packet when, when, when I'm saying packetization that means divide the packet when I'm saying packetization that means divide the packet divide the data packet 
in smaller unit in smaller units now do one thing just note down all this information now let me do one thing let me try and divide this data packets in the smaller units okay so we have the same information exactly the same information that we are using but this time this is the original packet which is having 100 bits here 1000 bits here and 100 bits here where this 1000 bits is of data and this 100 bits is of header now for simplicity purposes let us say let us divide this packet into five smaller packets divide it divide it into five smaller packets okay so when I'm saying divide into five smaller packets in that case I'm actually I actually mean that dividing the data packet only I mean dividing this part into five smaller units so if we are going to divide this part into five smaller units so every data here will be of uh, 200 bits so will be five smaller packets which will be of 200 bits again 200 bits again 200 bits then again 200 bits and the last also 200 bits so we have five small packets of 200 bits each assuming that this is the data packet 1 d1 this is d2 this is d3 this is d4 and this is d5 okay now if if you want to transmit this data packet through the network now what will be uh, the case is that this header will always remain same this header will always be of 100 bits the reason is the header contains the information which require which we require to send the data to the receiver okay so that information can be the address okay of which can be destination address as well as the receiver address destination address as well as the receiver address okay now if let us say this is the sender and this is the network again the same network and this is the receiver now this time instead of transmitting one single data packet we have to transmit these five smaller packets and size of every smaller packet will be of 300 bits every packet will be of 300 bits and will be having total of five smaller packets so this time we'll be transmitting total of 1500 bits now remember that initially we were transmitting only 1100 bits now this time we are transmitting a total of 1500 bits but this is a very interesting thing is that even if we are transferring more data comparatively but still the total time taken will be less will be less maybe I mean it can be less that I am going to prove that it will be less but that is not true in every case that that might be less okay so I'm just going to show this how this transmission time will be less and what will be the benefit of this but before that we need to understand that what is the concept behind this how this thing is working and why this transmission time will be less and the concept behind this is called as a pipelining the concept is pipelining we have already studied this pipelining concept in computer architecture and organization but for the students who are studying this for the first time let me elaborate you what is the pipelining concept okay assuming that this is uh, see pipelining is originally uh, designed by Henry Ford for the Ford motors while they were uh, creating a car so what happens is assuming that you want to create a car now this car may be having multiple parts it may be having engine it may be having chassis it may be having tires it may be having paint it may be having fit finishing or fittings etc etc now what generally used to happen is that generally when the company gets an order to create a car so initially it goes to the first phase assuming that these are the phases p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 that means initially they'll give a car to the first phase p1 where the people are going to create engine for this particular car so 
every phase is having some time that they are they are going to take. So assuming that the first phase takes five days, the second phase takes four days. This takes again five days. This also take five days, and this also taking five days. For simplicity purposes, let us assume this is also five days. So every phase is taking a total of five days. So initially, the first phase will take five days, and then the car will go to the next phase where the chassis will be built. So it will again take five days. And next phase will be built where the tires will be taken care of. So it is again going to take five days. And the next is the phase four where the paint will be taken care of. It will be again taking five days. And then finishing will again take five days. So in total, if you want a car, if you want to build a car, so that is going to take a total of 25 days to build. Now what Henry Ford did is he done something called as parallelization. He made these phases parallel. That means instead of uh, you know what p people used to do is they used to create one single car. So one single car take these 25 days. People used to get one single car, and one single car used to take these 25 days. Then they move on and create the next car. Then create a next car. But instead of this, what Henry Ford did is he parallelized. I mean, he gave given some parallel implementations of these phases. What he said is, instead of creating one car and then move on to the second car, let us do these phases parallelly. So what he did is, so this is representing the phases okay so this is the phase one this is a phase two then this is a phase three and then we have phase four and phase five so we have a total of five phases here like this okay so the car one let us say we have the first car which is a c1 so the car one will go to the phase one now as soon as we have already built an engine for the car one this is the five days this every one is showing five days so for the first five days i'm going to create car one and then the car one will move on to the second phase which is the uh, chassis phase in that case i'm going to put car two in the first phase that means parallelly when we are building a chassis for the car one some other team might be working on creating an engine for the car two this is the car two and then when the car one will move on to the third phase which is building the tires then the car two will be in the second phase which is building the chassis and the car three will be in the first phase which is building the engine and then again when the car one will go to the th third phase fourth phase then the car two will be in the tires car 3 will be in the chassis and car 4 will be in the engine and then the car 1 will be here car 2 will be here car 3 will be here car 4 will be here and car 5 will be here so after the end of this after the first 25 days after the first 25 days first car will come i mean car c1 will come okay but after that every 5 day every five day the next car will come for example after this even if you continue then you'll see that after this every ki car will come in next five days so if let us say you want to make 20 cars for 20 cars the first car will take 25 days but all the other 19 cars all the other 19 cars is only going to take five days to finish so in total this is the total amount of time that is going to take but in the first case in the first case if you want to make 20 cars then it is going to take 20 into 25 which is approximately equal to 500 days which is a very very big number so what henry ford did is he said instead of implementing one thing uh, uh, i mean in instead of creating one single car and then move on to the second car let us make cars in phases and two phases can work parallelly so if car one is in the second phase and the we can make car two in the first phase and so on so this is a concept of pipelining. I think you already know the concept of pipelining, but just for simplicity, I've explained you this concept. Now this concept of pipelining, actually it is also applicable on this concept of packetization. Now I, as I told you that without dividing this packet, it takes approximately 3.3 seconds plus propagation time for this entire data packets to travel to the receiver. But let us see, if we divide this entire data packet, into smaller packets then how this is going to help okay so the next video we'll see how this 
is going to help when we divide this entire bigger data packet into a smaller packet of five units okay